Rev. Sharpton will announce the formation of his Presidential Exploratory Committee. You can see that live on our companion network, C-SPAN 3. Now American politics continues with Kristen Gore. Last Saturday, the oldest daughter of former Vice President Al Gore spoke to political activists at the Young Democrats of America convention in Tucson, Arizona. It's about 15 minutes. Thank, thank you, New York. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I just want to take a personal uh, privilege and uh, want to thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to serve on your behalf at the Democratic National Committee for the last two years. And with the uh, Jay Parmalee team and my counterpart, Alexis Blisman, I hope we've been able to, <laughs> to represent your interests in uh, the best way that we knew how. And I, I thank you again for that honor. And I have the distinct honor, obviously, of introducing somebody that we all want to hear from. Uh, some of you probably saw her on the campaign last year for, I think it was her dad. I'm trying to remember who he was. <laughs> Um, but uh, if, as, as uh, the commissioner uh, indicated, if you wanted to talk about somebody who walked the walk of being a young Democrat and getting our message out, you need to look no further than the person that I have the honor of introducing. Whether it was helping us as young Democrats, coming to support us at the convention in Los Angeles last year, headlining our very successful uh, event at the Knitting Factory, bringing the message of young people to participate in the political process and helping us spread that message throughout the country. I can think of no better spokesperson for us as a generation than somebody who stepped up and had an opportunity to speak about somebody who she loves and knows better than anybody else. So let's give a great YDA welcome to our, we should say, you know, I, I can understand it's bittersweet. We're all disappointed with what happened last year. But in one sense, uh, and I, she does get her father back full time this time. So <laughs> I think in that sense, I, I'm sure she appreciates that opportunity. But let's uh, join together and give a YDA welcome to Kristen Gore. great to be here. Um, it's a tremendous honor, actually, to be a part of this incredible event, so thank you. I wanted to uh, make a few acknowledge acknowledgments. Thanks to Todd very much for the introduction. And um, also, I want to acknowledge Jay Parmley, who I just got to see again. I had the pleasure of getting to know him last year in Los Angeles. Um, and to all the outgoing national YD officers, thank you so much for your service. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the Executive Director, Dave Noble, uh, Rhonda Barnes, <laughs> Todd Lawson, who uh, was the director of this convention, Laura Sanchez, the outgoing state chair, and uh, Lisa Vinay, the uh, finance director and events coordinator here. Thanks a lot. Um, I haven't done any public speaking in 10 months, so bear with me. <laughs> uh, but. Again, I'm very happy to be here. As for my qualifications, I'm the daughter of the guy who used to be the next president of the United States. <laughs> sort of a complicated title. <laughs> but speaking of that guy, he and my mom send their hellos and best wishes to everyone here. They are actually in Tennessee this weekend helping to train. In Tennessee, I'm glad you guys are here. <laughs> They're helping to train uh, young people to be uh, ag activists in campaigns. And uh, they're having a great time down there. So. Uh, they said to say hello. Uh, the past eight months have been a strange time of transition for my family, as it has been for the country as a whole. As my father says, you win some, you lose some, and then there's that little known third category. <laughs> <laughs> sort of, <laughs> I wish someone had told us about that one <laughs> so we could have been a little more prepared. Um, but I've known my father for a good 24 years now, and we've been through a lot together. Uh, he taught me to swim, he made me do my homework, he comforted me when my dog died, he helped me memorize the Beatles albums in chronological order. <laughs> he was a really great dad. And so I went into the 2000 election a little bit biased, 
But I would have worked for my father and Joe Lieberman even if I didn't know them personally because I believe so strongly in what they fought for and in what they continue to fight for. And though things didn't work out exactly as we hoped, I've never been more proud of my dad than I was during those crazy, difficult weeks last November and December. I learned a few really important things from those tense days and nights. I learned that I never again want to have recurring dreams about the Supreme Court. <laughs> Some of those were scary. I had to fight to get Justice Scalia out of my subconscious. <laughs> but a more important lesson we all learned the hard way is that our democracy only truly serves us when we invest ourselves in it. Now that necessary investment doesn't always come easily. It requires faith and optimism in a time, at a time when being cynical seems like the cooler, safer alternative. So many people our age feel disillusioned and skeptical about politics, often for very valid reasons. I definitely understand those emotions. I've even flirted with them myself. <laughs> but we must convince our peers not to give in to them. Because sustaining such a detachment from the political realm um, creates just an apathy that leads to accepting mediocrity or worse. And mediocrity is not a standard, it's a problem. When we are passive, we forfeit our power. <laughs> Instead, young people must become involved. You all know that, that's why you're here. After all, we have the most to win or lose by the decisions that our leaders make. And anyone who doubts our generation's power need only look at the advertising agencies and entertainment industries watching our every move. They salivate over our potential patronage because we spark fashion fads, we dictate TV network lineups, we turn obscure rock bands into superstars overnight. We have incredible power. If we can harness this in the political realm, we could make history, not just trends and ratings. And despite our reputation, we are not an apathetic generation. When it comes to community service, we are incredibly active. In fact, we volunteer more than any generation in the history of this country, even more so than the famously idealistic baby boomers. <laughs> but unfortunately, we do not vote in the same numbers. Only about a third of 18 to 24 year olds vote consistently. We must help people see the connections between volunteering and voting. We should of course continue to clean up rivers, tutor troubled kids, and um, care for the homeless. But we should also vote to enact policies that regulate pollution, improve our public schools, and end homelessness. <laughs> we must convince people our age to let go of the sort of hip contempt for all things politi political that interferes with the understanding that our voices do matter and that every vote really does count. And by truly investing ourselves in the democratic process and convincing our peers to take that leap of faith along with us, we can guarantee that we elect leaders who have the intelligence to listen and the integrity to count our votes. At the moment, <laughs> at the moment, it's easy to feel we have an administration lacking in those qualities. <laughs> on the environment, women's rights, civil rights, labor rights, foreign policy, gun control, campaign finance reform, energy plans, health care, fiscal policy, just to name a few. <laughs> the current administration seems out of touch with the opinions and desires of the majority of the country. In Bush's defense, the majority is not his base. <laughs> they owe them, our leaders should not be pandering to powerful special interests at the expense of ordinary Americans. We need to remind this administration with our voices and our votes that this country is not a corporate aristocracy. <laughs> One of the most brilliant things about our democracy is that it always provides opportunities to move forward so that when current agendas prove short-sighted, we have the power to ensure that they are also short-lived. We are the generation that came of age with environmentalism. Many of us made dioramas of green, the greenhouse effect for the science fair or taught our parents how to recycle. We understand that global warming is a grave th threat and that our country must work with the rest of the world to combat it. 
Though the current administration sometimes seems to think the best way to deal with global warming is to start another Cold War, the majority of Americans are ready for bold, intelligent leadership that will protect our air, land, and water for generations to come. We must also harness our influence to protect those made vulnerable by misguided agendas. Most of us have never known a time when workers were forbidden to organize, when overt discrimination was a way of life, or when women were forced to resort to risky back alley abortions by a government intent on regulating their bodies. And none of us wants to know such a time. Through Through active involvement in the political realm, we can resist regressive forces and work to support our labor unions, make further advances on civil rights, and vigorously protect a woman's right to choose. Now, if I get going on classroom size, teacher salaries, gun control, real patients' bill of rights, and campaign finance reform, we'll definitely be here all day. <laughs> but the point is that all these issues affect our daily lives, and all of them are at stake in the coming months and years. Our crucial challenge is to make our politically cynical peers aware that these vital causes truly do hang in the balance and that we really can do something about them. Instead of dwelling on what's going wrong, we must focus on how to make things right. We must win the House in 2002 and the executive branch in 2004, and we will. Just as important. <laughs> with your help. Just as importantly, we must reach out to members of our generation with words and actions to convince them that public service done right is what makes our country great. As activists, we have the will and determination to strive for important causes. As young people, we have an interest in shaping our future. As Democrats, we have the support of the majority of the country. And as Americans, we have the privilege and duty to invest ourselves in our democracy. My parents worked hard to instill the value of public service in me and my brother and sisters when we were very young. I remember when I was about five or six, my dad teaching me about Gandhi. And one of my dad's favorite quotes is something Gandhi said. It is, you must become the change you wish to see in the world. I remember when my dad told me this, having no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> but now that I'm a little older, I think that this sentiment really powerfully describes the opportunity at hand. Now is the time for our generation to shape the future. Here is our chance to be the change we wish to see. Let's seize it and make the moment our own. Thank you very much.